Hey folks, and welcome to Typology, the show on which we explore the story of you through the lens of the Enneagram. My name is Anthony Skinner, producer of the show, and we are thrilled to have you here with us today. Hey, we've got some great friends in the studio today, Chris and Jenny Gravy. I love Chris and Jenny. They live here in Nashville slash Franklin, Tennessee. Chris is a seven wing eight and Jenny is a one wing nine. Chris was a cast member on MTV's Road Rules 2 and MTV's Battle of the Sexes 2. The Gravies have been married for 15 years now and they have a brand new book titled The Rhythm of Us. In this book, they give us five practices or guides for a thriving marriage. So you're going to want to hear this. So strap in, folks. While you're strapping in, let me remind you, Ian dropped his brand new book, The Story of You, on December 28th. It is anywhere fine books are sold. And to celebrate the fact that he has dropped this new book, we're doing a book giveaway. We're giving 10 books away. Now, here's how you get in on the action. Simply post on Instagram about the book and include in your post the hashtag the story of you so include hashtag story of you and ian's handle at ian morgan cron i-a-n-m-o-r-g-a-n-c-r-o-n include those two things on your post we'll pull all those names of the people who've posted throw them in a hat and draw 10 names out and here's the cool thing ian will write a note and sign the book and he will address it to whomever you choose. So if you want it for yourself or if you want it for a friend or a loved one, he will make it out to whomever you like. So don't miss out on that opportunity. Include hashtag story of you and at Ian Morgan Cron. Hey, that's it for me, Anthony Skinner. It's time to get to Chris and Jenny Gravy and the host of our show, Ian Cron. Chris and Jenny Gravy, Enneagram 7. Chris, Enneagram 1, Jenny authors of the new book, The Rhythm of Us, Create the Thriving Marriage You Long For. Ooh, sounds juicy when we're, <laughs> when, we, when we're talking about a seven and a one, writing about creating the thriving marriage you long for. We're going to get down into it, Anthony. That's right. <laughs> we're going all the way in here. I, I, I can't wait. Seven and one. How are you doing? <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They're, they're, that's a right on cue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very yeah, much. you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So, what's? I know you know the Enneagram. How how did you learn about it? How did you? What what drew you to it, Jenny? What kind of drew you? <laughs> She dragged me into it. Yeah. She dragged you into it. Come on, tell me, tell me where all this okay. came from. So I first encountered the Enneagram at Belmont University, where I went to school. Oh, cool. Um, in several classes, but initially in a pastoral counseling class I took with Dr. Ben Curtis, who's a fantastic professor there. Um, and I was just fascinated with it. It felt like looking in a mirror, and it just instantly helped me understand all the relationships I was in, the close relationships, and I completely pegged him as a seven, came home, you know, did what you're not supposed to do and typed him. Um, but that's how we first got introduced to it. And in that season, I really thought um, initially that I was a seven um, because, you know, we we're early 20s, we're in love, we're not many responsibilities. We were saying yes to everything, having fun, carefree. Um, so it was a very healthy season of life for me. So I looked a lot like a seven. Um, and then we had a bunch of kids. We have five kids years later. I feel um, tired right yeah. now. <laughs> That's a real thing. Yeah. But um, your book came out, actually. And Chris was on staff at Life Church, which he'll, he'll talk about, I'm sure, in a minute. But he led his staff through your book and was like, babe, I don't think you're a seven. <laughs> I think you need to listen to this chapter. So I listened to the audiobook and the one chapter I just it was light bulbs all over the place so that well, was how what I was the first was emotion one. you had when you heard it uh when I when I read the what section on ones what 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 feeling came up for you um I think honestly it was like oh shoot <laughs> I thought I was a, a carefree you know seven but no I think it was like oh this makes so much sense um, I think it, it helped me fill in some of the blanks behind some of the whys behind my habits. Um, 
Yeah, I think it was a just aha moment for mm-hmm. sure. So Chris got sold a little short here because in the beginning we were talking about he got dragged into this, <laughs> but he's led right. a he group has. through your book and he helped you determine your type. Yes, he did. So. Yes. Well, every day Jenny would be like, no, I'm a four. No, I'm pretty sure I'm a nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, a, I'm like, and she, she went all the way around. Yes. She was all of them. Yep. But then it ultimately was like, yeah, you're one, babe. You know, we just kind of kept coming back to the one. And then, yeah, I think when she shared it with me in the in her college days, I was like, great. You know, but I was <laughs> I was sevening all over the place. So it was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but that's cool. But then as I went down my like career path, I, you know, I discovered I was in the world of the Myers-Briggs and the DISC profiles and all those and a lot of the work settings that I was in. But then when... Any, when, when you know the road back to you came out the Enneagram I was like wow like this is this is so much has so much more depth and truth and emotion as a seven I I really loved kind of the way it unpacked and so I, I just took my team through it and I was like okay everyone you're gonna share what this type is and this was 2015 because the book came out when oh in uh, 16. Was it 16? Okay. Was it six? Then I guess it was 16. See, I'm a seven, so I don't know. But right when it came out, I discovered it was kind of before it really took off. And I was like, this is cool. So I took my team through it, and they were just blown away by discovering their types. And then in that moment, there was just, she had already called me a seven. But then as I read it, everyone's just like, you're a seven. There was no like <laughs> debating, there was no questioning, like, Chris, you are a seven. So, mm. so here I am, I'm still seven. <laughs> What's always interesting about seven ones is you mentioned it, right? When you're doing great, you move across the Enneagram to seven, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, um, and so it actually makes sense. I mean, if you're, mm-hmm. plus when you're younger, you know, add that on to the fact that you may have just been in a pretty good place and you just were living a lot in, in that security point, sure. right? Yeah. Now, when he's not doing great, <laughs> right? <laughs> Where, where is he headed? I'm going one. You're, yeah. going, you're going to the low side of one. Yeah. Right. So you're going to be, interestingly, probably in some seasons of life, you're going to be crossing paths yeah. you know, in opposite, in opposite directions. directions, right? Yeah, hopefully meet um, each other in the middle. And- well, it really actually does play out because when I'm, when I'm in a struggle or I'm in that spot or whatever, she can kind of tap into her seven and kind of pull me up. And we've we found that, that just throughout our marriage, it's kind of been that like, hey, come on, it's all good. Let's go have some fun. Like, get out, get out of the, the depths. Like, come on, let's go have some fun. And, and vice versa, she pulls me back. So it's a re- it really is a great, a great mix and balance. Mm. And it doesn't surprise me that you had moments of thinking that you were a four, right? Yes. Because at... Oh, yeah. And your stress point would be the low side of four. For sure. Absolutely. You know, you kind of move into a much more melancholy, depressed Scrumpy. state. Grumpy. Yeah. A, a little clingy. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I just feel all the emotions of the situation, whatever it is. Mm. Um, like, this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. Like, it just, it almost paralyzes me. Yes. And he is so good under stress. I mean, he's already fixed the problem usually before I'm even like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good team um, when we when we um, encounter difficulty for sure. Wow, that's good. Yeah. All right, so you, I want to just push in here a little bit. Yeah, please. please. That's what we do here. At Let's Typology. plumb the depths. <laughs> Bring it on. All about it. So you you've written this book, The Rhythm of Us: Create the Thriving Marriage You Long For. How long have you guys been married? Seventeen, 17 years. Seventeen years. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Okay. So I don't think you could actually write a credible book on a thriving marriage unless you once had, at least for a, a meaningful season, a not so great marriage. Mm. Honestly, I think yeah. I, I would sort of be like, well, on what basis? You know, you've, you've only yeah. if, if you've only had a happy marriage, then yeah. how on what basis would you be able to speak into the lives of people that have struggled? Right. Sure. So tell me about a season when a seven and a one struggled in their marriage. That's good. You know, it's, it's, it, this book was, this project was so great for us because it just, you know, was this like came out of this, we have this podcast. We were like, we love hearing from Chris and Jenny, you know, and then next thing you know, we've got this book that's coming out. And so you're going, okay, this book has really kind of given us words, but it's to kind of the way our marriage is flushed out. But it also has given us an opportunity to reflect on those moments. And I think we've kind of pinpointed a couple of seasons where I was busy just doing my thing. She was over here. And so, you know, it was, it was, uh, it actually was it was around 2013. Um, we had I had taken this job as a as a pastor, a campus pastor, a really large church, and I was just head down, 
building, 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 and not necessarily 100%, not, not necessarily, I wasn't just focused on her and our marriage and what we we're doing. And I was doing some entrepreneurial stuff at the same time. And I think in that moment, I had kind of not left her in the dust, but I think it was just like I wasn't necessarily stewarding her, her feelings, our relationship, our marriage. At that point, we were we were getting close to 10 years in marriage. So like, I think there was a level of comfort that had kind of set in at that point. And so, um, yeah, I think, I don't know, would, would you say that there's no... Yeah, spot? I think we both point to that season, um, probably for different reasons. And we had different, obviously, perspectives on it. But, you know, I think what I, I came out of that season learning is that while I felt so secure being in the same place for a while, that was mm. the longest career that he's ever had. I mean, we were there Shocker. in the local pastoring position for almost 10 years, which for a seven, as you know, is quite incredible. Um, and I, as a one, as a social one, I loved being a pastor's wife. I loved being able to answer people's phone calls and help people, you know, find their best, the best version of themselves, move towards God, um, you know, learn spiritual practices, all of it. I felt like I was thriving, but, but I learned through that season that as a seven, he needs to be able to have permission, permission to chase after some of those ideas. I mean, he wakes up with a hundred ideas every single yes, day. Yes, he does. <laughs> every day. And, you know, in that season, being faithful looked like showing up and doing the same thing every day. Um, and there was great depth and security and, and lessons that he learned during that season. But I think that was the pivotal point for him where he needed me to come on board and say, okay, like it's okay for you to chase some of these other ideas that you have stirring because if he doesn't, then there's a piece of him that starts to rust out and starts to get, starts to come out sideways, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. 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 But what that sounds great yeah you, right. you, you recognized um you know chris's architecture mm -hmm. you know not the we all know the enneagram points out there's not so great parts of the architecture but i think right. that kind of thinking on the part of the seven and that way of being in the world can be very creative and very wonderful you made some accommodations yeah right so what kind of accommodations have you had to make i don't want to believe this is a one-sided marriage <laughs> right i want to believe that you have had to Disciplined parts of your person in order to accommodate the way that Jenny perceives the world. What, what, what have you had to do? Hey, Typology Tribe, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for helping us bring you what I hope is great content every week. Now, you all know I'm a big proponent of counseling. Whether you feel like something is interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving certain goals, Counseling is a great tool to help identify what those blocks are and then work through them. Yet finding a therapist can sometimes feel intimidating, but not with BetterHelp. BetterHelp offers online counseling at your own time and your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions plus text and chat with your therapist when it's convenient for you. These are licensed professional counselors who specialize in things like depression, anxiety, stress, relationships, LGBT matters, trauma, and grief. BetterHelp has counselors available worldwide and have over 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And get this, if you're not satisfied with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time at no additional cost. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash typology podcast. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash typology podcast. T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. You made some accommodations. Yeah. Right. So what kind of accommodations have you had to make? I don't want to believe this is a one-sided marriage, <laughs> right? I want to believe that you have had to 
disciplined parts of your person in order to accommodate the way that Jenny perceives the world. What 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 have you had to do to? Yeah, I, I think the the first half of our marriage was was all about the adventure, right? It was chasing. I mean, we lived all over the country. I was sharing earlier that we lived in, you know, we were in the Carolinas and California, and then we got to Texas. And I think that's where I I realized that for a season, like Chris, you need to settle down, give her some, give stability for her, for our kids, for yourself, grow as a as a man, as just like a husband, as a dad, like be completely okay to like just enjoy a season of of serving someone else's vision someone else's dream and then i think when i stepped out of the church and kind of went down the entrepreneurial path she jokes about how she was kind of tethered to me and i think you know we ended up launching a podcast and it was one of those things like she had done the stay-at-home mom thing she'd been really involved in the church as a pastor's wife doing bible studies and all the things she loved all of those things and, um, but when we stepped out, it was like, Hey, how about we tap into some of your dreams? So yeah. kind of allowing her to dream a little bit and kind of step out. And I remember we were doing a podcast early on. We didn't have a clue what we were doing. Not, not that we still do, but <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're figuring out as we go, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't a video podcast. She just like, she just was like, she looked over me and was like, Oh my gosh, I love this. So much. <laughs> she, like she was just so excited. And then right after this, she just looked at me and she said, please don't ever let me not do something like this again. Mm. Like, so it was just, she had, she was so faithful with her season of serving. We have five kids, birthing five kids, like loving our kids, helping them grow. And they're still young. I mean, our youngest is a four year old, our oldest is 16. So we still have kids, right? But I think in that mix where she was so focused on kind of everyone else, I, we God graciously helped me alongside of her step in and have her have something that she could put her hands to outside of just uh, being mom yeah. and, and, uh, and wife. So, Anthony, this is so great because what it, what it highlights is is that when, when you know the Enneagram and you use it, mm-hmm. it gives you such fast insight mm-hmm. into the, the, the basic fears, the basic desires, um, the, you know, the, the typical sort of needs of, of the other – which sometimes need to be challenged, right? Because we can get sure. rigid in those needs, right? Right. right. Um, and, and yet, um, mm-hmm. it, it gives you insight that otherwise might take you years to get. And those could be really difficult years before you get it. Mm-hmm. And so to realize, okay, you know, I'm, I've got this type of inter- interior architecture, but I'm married to someone who doesn't. So, for example, this is one thing that came to my mind as you were talking. You know, we in the Enneagram, and I've never actually written about it, but it's worth discussing, is that every type has a different orientation to time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you as a one, Jenny, your orientation to time is the present moment. Like whatever task is here right now, (laughs) that's what we're about. Like this is where my focus of attention is in terms of time. It's like right here, right now. Your orientation is far into the future. <laughs> yes, sir. Right? Yes. So knowing that mm-hmm. can give you such profound insight. And also, I think part of our journey of self-discovery and bringing our lives into balance, because that's a lot of what the Enneagram is, mm-hmm. bringing heart, head, and a body into balance instead of over relying on one center and i think when we think about orientation to time the same thing is true mm-hmm. you can't i mean just because you're future oriented doesn't mean that you don't think in the present or the past it just means you lean more into the future mm-hmm. right so not to the exclusion of the other two time orientations but to bring all three into balance right which can be hard for a seven right i can't go into depth but for example a seven isn't going to want to spend a lot of time thinking about the past particularly parts of the past that are painful sure right right Right. uh and um the present for you can get really boring yeah right it's like oh uh, moving on you know it's like uh, uh and in part because of the fear of the unconscious fear of boredom stuck commitment routine all, all of those things, or life suffering, just the, the bumps and bruises that life gives us. You, um, it sounds like, you know, with that present orientation, you need to be more able to think future, which it, apparently you have. I mean, for this marriage to work, you both have, maybe not knowing orientations to time, 
baked it into your calculations. But for those listening, I want them to know, if you know your orientation of time, ones, twos, and sixes, present. Three, sevens, and eights, future. Fours, fives, and nines, past. Mm -hmm. If you know what your orientation of time is, and the other two that you don't tend to actually ascribe a lot of... In fact, you could, as a seven, you could judge me as a four as being too stuck in the past, right? And, and, and actually, to, and actually kind Every of, time I meet a four. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. Nice. <laughs> <You're both laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> but, but my point is, you know, it's like, for me as a person who tends to be past-oriented, I can look at a future-oriented person sometimes and go, gosh, they're so superficial. They don't mm. want to do their work. For right. sure. And yeah. that's not fair of me. Right. And it's really important for you to go, mm, he's got a point too. Mm -hmm. Right? That's How do right. we bring those things mm -hmm. uh, into rich balance is yeah. what will make a marriage better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. You're looking off in the distance. Are you thinking about the next thing? Or are you are you, <laughs> are you pondering are you pondering what I just said? <laughs> no, I'm I'm definitely just I'm just chewing on what on what you said, you know, and, and looking at like, you know, she has been so good at helping me kind of just slow down and be here today, right? Like you know, like it's si simple things of like, hey, you know, you got a kid right there. Get off your phone, whatever you're doing, yes. or whatever, right? Like, mm -hmm. like you just missed it. And those are the sad moments that I have to, I have to not avoid reality, right? Like not avoid that pain and go, man, I, I did. And so or how can I change that and be present here today and, and baking in being present with her and the kids and, you know, five kids are scheduled, all that or whatever. It can be super busy. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just processing like how that plays out and how we've, really been you know she listens to my dreams about the future and i'm and i'm 100 percent down to say what are we doing on saturday so <laughs> on that i've heard several ones and sixes talk about how terrifying it is sevens, not no one well ones and sixes talk about how terrifying it is for sevens to be with a seven when they're launching oh, into yes. the next thing you know oh yeah uh how did like what was the tension like of living with that and what was it like to to discover oh this is this because he's talking about all these things he's going to do doesn't mean he's actually going to do them. That was a huge light bulb moment. I yeah. think when I realized, oh, he doesn't, he's not actually going to pursue all of these dreams. He just <laughs> wants to talk about them. Like right. that was so relieving <laughs> yeah. because at my brain, when I hear an idea, I'm like, how are we going to do that? And what does that mean for the kids? And I, you know, I'm trying to, okay. And I wrap my head around it right. and I start going down that path and then he's off to the next idea. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't actually serious about going after all right. of them, but he just wants somebody to listen and yeah. process those dreams with him. Yeah. So yeah, that was a huge light bulb moment to realize, okay, I can listen. I can show up and listen. I yeah. can ask questions. But it doesn't mean that I have to make the path to get there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, and I have to be really cognizant to go, okay, hold on a second. Like, you just shared this crazy dream and idea or whatever. Or even the idea of, like, we're trying to build a house. So it was like, okay, Chris, you loved the idea of a basement yesterday. Why are you... Okay, she's, like, getting used to a basement. <laughs> right. And I'm like, we, it's okay. We don't need a basement. She's like, what? <laughs> yesterday, it was like your hopes and dreams in the whole world was in the basement. And I'm like, ah, let's go. Let's move on. She's like, how do you move that fast? <laughs> yes. And so it's just... So I've learned to go, okay, Chris, like, understand how she's wired and, and be cognizant of that and not give her whiplash mm -hmm. all over the place, yeah. you know? And so... But I think part of it, too, is... 17 years, a big, long adventure, mm -hmm. I've earned her trust and she's earned mine. Right. And it's continuing to grow. And we've got five kids that love us and we love them and they're still alive and they're still kicking and we've got a roof <laughs> over our head and, you know, things seem to, seem to work out, you know, like, yeah. and, you know, and so she's a big part of that and she lets me dream and I, and I also make sure I rein it in as well. So I think just years of trust the more you earn that trust she goes okay like he's for us i don't have to be afraid that he's going to put us in disaster mm -hmm. yeah i think too i would say you know because i we share that line i get i get that that headspace a that's little good, bit yeah. you know like um i know what it's like to be on a great adventure that's exciting and fun and i'm usually down to say yes to an ad adventure as long as it doesn't cross over my like moral compass you know what I mean like if as long as I know it's not adventure for being reckless you know like it's not gonna uh, cross over the line of being wrong <laughs> then I'm down for it um but yeah and, and he's he's usually really good at that you know like adventuring for the sake of fun and play not not trying to be 
rebellious and reckless. It's more like fun and playful. So that's something we've learned for sure. Hmm. So, you know, um, just knowing how the faith-based world operates, a lot of times I get books pitched to me or I see books and I'll just be honest about marriage and I roll my eyes a little bit sure. because they tend to be kind of Pollyannish mm-hmm. and they're, they're, you know, they're a little like, Hey, you know, you, mar-, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, they, like it's a lot yes. of sales and there's, yeah. you know, and sometimes I'll just be honest, you're, like, you're a great looking couple, right? Thanks. And, but sometimes I look at it and I go, it's too good. Mm-hmm. It's like, and if I were going to read this book, I would be so depressed comparing my marriage to what appears to be perfection. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem, I'm not saying of your book, but in oh. the faith-based world, yeah. there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of glitter, there's a little bit of starry-eyedness, mm-hmm. and not a lot of reality. Yeah. Like, you know, let's face it, marriage is really hard, mm-hmm. right? And the divorce rate among, if I'm right about this, Anthony, at least one year this was true, the divorce rate among people who self-identified as people of faith was higher than it was among those who weren't. And I think part of it is because of the pressure and the disillusionment of being in a world where mm. there's this kind of ideal yeah. of the faith-based marriage and everybody's kind of like this. And, and But everyone else is kind of looking around going, I have problems. <laughs> <laughs> everyone doesn't seem to have problems. It's like Instagram marriages, yeah. you know, it's like a lot of gloss on it, you know? Yeah. How does this book differ? Like, like, how would I read this book and go, okay, we're getting down to some legit stuff here? Well, I would say, and you can answer this as well, but sure. what comes to mind for me is that, you know, because we've, we've been married 17 years, but it doesn't feel that long to us. And in, um, you know, looking at other marriages who've been in it for decades longer than us. Um, like mine. Like yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I think as a, as a one, as a researcher, as a studier, I, I know I always have so much to learn. Mm-hmm. So we tried to look at, um, take the perspective of we do not have this thing all figured out. We are still learning too. We are still figuring this out as we go. And so we tried to sit at the feet of some really incredible couples who've been married for so much longer than we have, who have fruit in their lives, who have walked through seasons of heartache, of tragedy, but also of victory and come out on the other side somehow still loving each other, still loving God, um, and tried to take notes from those Mm. couples. And so the book is based around five rhythms that we found to be true of each of these couples that we sat at their feet and tried to learn from. Um, so I, I cling to those rhythms. Not and some of them we've we've been practicing for 17 years, and some of them are brand new to us that we're learning as well as the reader. Um, Can you run us through those? Yeah, sure. Um, did you have anything to say about that? Yeah, well? I, I think for us, we we come from two very different personal backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I had four dads and three moms by the time I graduated high school. Mm. So a lot of divorce, a lot of brokenness, you know. And, you know, as a seven, that's just, you know, they're going to grab a hold of that and say, I got this and, and off in the world. So for me, I saw a lot of what not to do mm-hmm. in a marriage. I saw a lot of brokenness. And, uh, you know, I love my parents. They're, they're you know, I respect them and I love them. But, it, you know, I think so we both brought kind of with it was interesting. My mom still kind of had us in the church in a faith background, but I, it was just a mess. Right. So. In my 20s, I had to really wrestle that out with my own faith and like what I saw and what I experienced. And, you know, she had a different experience. She grew up in the church and she can share, you know, her walk and she does in the book. And so I think that's where we're coming from is like, like I've seen, I've seen a mess and I, and I decided pretty early on that like I learned all the things what not to do. I saw every single thing that you should not do in a marriage. I saw every kind of, you know, guy come and go that was not a husband, was not, you know, a leader was not a love lover of his spouse. And um, so for me, I try to take those pain points that I had growing up and say, okay, how can I mm-hmm. change the destiny for my own children, a legacy for my own family? All right, so before we go to these five rhythms. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to come back to it, mm-hmm. Anthony. People don't drop four dads and three moms on me without wanting to stop and talk about it. <laughs> please. Okay? Yeah, please. And 
I would argue that part of the reason you became a seven was born of the trauma of having, you know, that kind of very chaotic. And I'm sure, I mean, with that many people involved in leading a family, there was significant trauma there. So my question is for you as a seven that typically would want to not spend a lot of time kind of unpacking that and all of the feelings and whatnot that came comes up. In it. Have you been in therapy before? I haven't. Okay. So how have you, why are you smiling? No, I, I love that you're asking this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how have you, or have you processed and integrated that experience into your life, you know, because that's a lot of pain, brother. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, oh man, my, my twenties, my early twenties, um, I, I harnessed it into other things driven, trying to prove, you know, kind of that young, taking that young drive of an early 20 something. I'm going to show them. I ended up on MTV. I'm going to go speak. I'm well, we're get, getting to that. Yeah. We're, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. But I think like, you know, throughout the years, um, as I just sit and do deep work with the Lord, you know, and find grace and forgiveness. I mean, I was so, you know, one step that I was just so mad at the way he treated my mom for so long. And so mm -hmm. I just had to go on a journey of finding grace and peace and forgiveness for him. You know, I had one stepfather who just would sit me down at the age of 12 on a couch and just preach to me to like hours at a time. And basically in essence, like ruin the idea and concept of a loving father and the scriptures. And so as I've gone in and just quietly by myself, not on the stage, not with anyone else, with the Lord through prayer, uh, to, you know, close friends, those, those, those fours and those in my life that could help me walk through that kind of stuff. I mean, God just brought a lot, of, a lot of peace there. And then also when you stare at your children, right? When I see my son, who was our first, and our four girls after that, um, I just, I owe it to them to find peace in, in that realm because I won't be a good husband, I won't be a good father if I don't, if I don't come, come to peace and, and, and understand that that was that season, that's forgiveness. I'm, this is, does not define my future or my family now. It gave me a good roadmap and compass of what not to do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been years of, of healing and peace and then just walking out with her and, and, and just going, it's possible to, to do this thing and to mm. do it different and do it right. Mm. Anthony. Ian Cron. What if I told you, you could get high quality, ethically sourced, organic, and non-GMO groceries delivered to your door for a lot less than you're paying now and help out families in need. Now that's something I'd want to know more about. Yes, you do. Let me tell you, that's what I'm doing since I discovered Thrive Market. It's an online membership-based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. With each membership, they donate one membership to a family in need. So far, in fact, they've donated over four point five million dollars in healthy groceries wow that's amazing right and they carefully vet each and every item so i get the best selection of high quality pantry essentials and sustainable meat and seafood online without cleaning out my wallet <laughs> you know what i love what Jackson's Honest Sweet Potato Chips. Have you ever had those? Oh, you're making my mouth water. Mm -hmm. Got them from Three of Thrive Market. You're welcome. Also, I love Ora Bora sparkling water in the cactus rose flavor. Oh, man. You know I love my Ora Bora. My favorite is lavender cucumber. Where'd you get it? I got it from Thrive Market. That's right. You did. And my question to you, Anthony, is can your grocery store do that? No way. Now it can when you go to thrivemarket.com slash typology. Join today to get 40% off your first order and a free gift. That's thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, market.com slash typology to get 40% off your first order and a free gift. Thrivemarket.com slash typology. So... 
we just had Dan Allender on the show earlier, oh, earlier today. Uh, oh, nice. And we spent a wonderful hour in conversation with him. And I guess maybe that's what's influencing my questions here, right? I don't know if you've read any of Dan's work, but Dan's not afraid to go into the dark side, right? Because he just thinks that's where all the money is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean personal. I mean, when I mean money, I mean that's where the juice is, yeah. for personal growth, right? Gotcha. Yeah. And um, so I'm going to lean into you a little harder yeah, here. Yeah, please. So yeah. Um, in, in your, I'm not saying that counseling or therapists are like the priests of the age and they're perfect and you can't be a well-adjusted good person without, you know, having gone to therapy. But you have some stuff, right? Like, like I, I'm just, I'm going to be honest and say I'm surprised that, that you haven't been or felt like you haven't hit some roadblocks in your life where you're like, the exp- I've got to go back and clean that side of the street because, you know, with somebody. Yeah. Because it is very difficult to self sort of illuminate sure. parts of your life you know i mean I, I, again i'm just again curious if um it has ever p- crossed your mind that gosh you know and, and this also may happen when your kids get older right but you got a 16 year old so i don't know what <laughs> like why don't you answer the Can question I, yeah. i'm dying to say something because when we I, when we were first married, you know, before we had kids, a very short window before we started having kids. Whoops. But uh, yeah, we figured that out pretty quickly. Um, but I remember having these conversations, you know, because mm. I love to plumb the depths. I love to, you know, just kind of talk about everything, emotions and what you've been through. And I love to analyze what I think is happening and all of it. So, <laughs> I, I mean, we, we talked, we had, and, you know, I just think it, we, I was like, asking similar questions with you like like doesn't that bother you that you went through that or that you saw that like how does that Mm -hmm. how do you flush that out in your in your walk and I don't know when we sat down in premarital counseling I remember um the couple we were sitting with had a similar reaction that you just said that you should be in a gutter somewhere is what the wife said like I feel like hearing your story you should be like out on the street Mm -hmm. I don't understand you I don't understand how you're sitting in front of me healthy loving person like um and I mean I all I can say is just from knowing Chris like you know he's said before that he was very angry before he came to the Lord but that's Mm. something that when he encountered Christ it really it really healed a lot of that in him um by experiencing that love and Mm -hmm. I just you know I, I have similar feelings. Like, how are you as incredible as you are? And how have you learned to function so well in life not having that modeled for you, you know? Um, so I love that you're hmm. diving into that. So I always like to say, oftentimes when I'm in a conversation and someone says something equally, um, not challenging, maybe, but... Uh, <laughs> something that throws me back on my heels. And I can feel like you're just a little thrown back on your heels even now. Like I just feel a little bit of like, oh. Um, I think I'm just internalizing. I, my, my whole thing is I'm always going to go, okay. Because like I don't, I'm not going to be real deep about it. I'm going to go, all right, well, I don't know. Do I, is there, what else do I need to work on? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's where I'm, that's, that's where I'm still going, okay, m- maybe. And I, yeah. and I think that's where I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to go, all right. Good. So, I would just, I'm not your therapist, right? But it is my default to kind of go, oh. Yeah, yeah. And it is my show. So, um, sure is. But I would, I'm one of those guys who's like, when someone does that to me uh, about something, I, I always tend to go, okay, bookmark. I bookmark it. Sure. Right? Mm-hmm. And then I do what you're doing, which is I, I leave wondering, open minded. I just mm-hmm. sort of leave mm-hmm. wondering to myself, mm-hmm. oh, hmm, maybe. Yeah. You know, and then I see if at some future date, usually sooner than later, if if there's a, a pattern of messages that I'm getting, if I mm-hmm. stop to think about it, mm-hmm. there is a pattern happening in my life. And I wonder if that should activate my intuition mm-hmm. and tell me, hmm, maybe I will. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I will. OK, moving on. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to keep going down there, but, but trust me, I could have gone deeper. Yeah. But we won't do that. Okay, five rhythms in the book that five can help rhythms. a marriage thrive. What are they? Yes. Um, five rhythms are? First one is speaking life. It's, and we have uh, speaking life, slowing down, serving others, staying in awe, and seeking adventure. 
okay. are the five rhythms. I right. can guess his favorite, probably. <laughs> yeah, adventure and awe. <laughs> I was going to say slowing down. Do yeah, that, that one, I was like, I got... <laughs> well, I think it was what was cool for us is, you know, the, the speaking life, the slowing down, you know, the serving, like those were... Those were pretty clear for us. And even adventure, like we knew that adventure was, was like a core rhythm for us and that we'd seen. But the one that really crystallized for us in this book that we had never really been able to put words to was, was staying in awe you know, of each other okay. and, our, and our marriage and just in, in our life and our relationship. And so when we finally were able to kind of put that together, it was, uh, it was just a real gift on, on top of the other four rhythms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think learning to practice, you know, awe and speaking life are practices people usually aren't attuned to. Right. Right. I mean, that's, that's, it, it sounds simple, but it's a, it has a high impact. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's harder than it sounds to mm-hmm. actually practice it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, we were talking on the way over here. I think as a one, um, I, that was something I didn't realize that the Enneagram helped me realize, you know, habits that you, you don't know you're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, you start to read and go, oh, I guess I do do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but one for us was speaking life. I mean, he just, praise comes out, words of praise come out of him without him even thinking about it. He's just so good at, I mean, uh, he speaks it to strangers. There was a lady parking on the way over here. And he, you got it. You've got this. You're, I mean, he just, <laughs> strangers, just, it, it just comes out of him. And that was something I really had to work on. And it wasn't that I didn't think nice things. I just wasn't in the habit of saying them out loud all the time. Um, but, you know, after a while, he was like, uh, I need you to tell me I'm awesome. <laughs> like, I need to hear those things. <laughs> you're going to have to start saying things and, you know, just realizing, oh, you're right. I don't do that. I didn't realize mm-hmm. I was withholding praise. I wasn't mm. consciously trying to withhold praise. I just... I'm not good at doing this. I don't, I don't know how to do this. How do I do this? And so that was one I really learned from him. Just, he just does it so naturally that after a while I learned how to do it and I Mm. learned how important it was to him and how it kind of set the culture of our marriage and of our family. Once we started having kids, it became a big value. So that's a big one for sure. Yeah. One of the things I do with my girls is, and it's kind of fun now. So my four year old goes, dad, tell me what you're going to tell me. I, I always go, there's something I got to say to you. And she's like, I know what you're going to say. And I was like, well, you know what I'm going to say. And she's like, you're going to say, you love me. I'm smart and I'm beautiful. And I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> Cause you always say it. And I'm like, good. Cause I want to build those foundations. I mm-hmm. want on their wedding day. Now this, you want to get me crying. Like this will get me. When I look at them before I walk into the aisle, I'm going to look at them and say, there's three things I want to tell you. I love you. You're beautiful. You're smart. And that like, I hope that the words that we're speaking now will will plant seeds that will produce life in them for years to come, and even in my grandkids. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, I just want to say, just a, a, observing myself in this interaction, that when a seven does what you just did, which is exp- kind of go to a place on the feeling spectrum that is not necessarily where they spend a lot of time that in this very brief 30 minutes we've been together you were the most beautiful that 30 seconds was the most beautiful you appeared in the last 30 minutes because we saw that other emotional dimension that in an unhealthy seven you don't see Right. In fact, you would have probably been telling jokes mm-hmm. rather than allowing those feelings to be available and to access them, have them, well, move on from them, right? And now looking at you, you're getting a little puddly, <laughs> and I'm curious why. Hey, everybody. One of the lessons I've learned over the years is that not everybody benefits from a traditional 50 minute counseling session. And this is why some people can go to couples therapy or personal counseling for a long time and never really get anywhere. This is why I'm such a believer of intensive counseling and my friends at Restoring the Soul in Colorado, created by my longtime friend Michael Cusick to help couples or individuals experience deep change in how 
half day blocks over one or two weeks. Now listen, if you can't wait months or years to get to the bottom of an issue or to experience breakthrough, you need to get in touch with my friend Michael and his extraordinary team of counselors at Restoring the Soul. If you're looking to get out of the rut you're in, but can't wait months or years, call Restoring the Soul today for a free consultation with Michael's staff. Call 303-932-9777 and learn how their intensive counseling process can help you. As a special bonus, just for Typology listeners, make sure to visit www.restoringthesoul.com slash typology to download their PDF called Five Ways Unaddressed Trauma May Be Derailing Your Relationships. And now looking at you, you're getting a little puddly. <laughs> and I'm curious why. I just love when he acts as yes. that, you know? Um, yeah. And isn't it interesting that it's something in the future mm-hmm. that causes him to tear up? By and I feel like it's usually something in the future that gets him emotional yeah. um, because that's his orientation to time. But I just love when he's when he gets emotional. <laughs> that's good. It's great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so now to you, though. Okay. So you actually did highlight a, a struggle right. for ones, which is they can be stingy with praise. Right. And part of it isn't that they're kind of like screw-faced Puritans. It's, yeah. it's more like um, they figure like, well, that's your job. What, <laughs> what, why do I have to, like, what do you need, a parade? Like, that's, that, you, did, you were dutiful. <laughs> you were, <laughs> yeah, it's no, but it's like, it's dutiful. It's responsible. I do that every single day. Well, I don't need a parade. I just, that was my job, right? You're laughing now. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> well, I mean, and so, you know, sometimes people get a little, you know, I don't know, anxious when I say things like this. But, you know, fundamentally, Christianity is an awakening religion, Mm -hmm. meaning that, and people tend to assign that word to Eastern religions. And I think that's unfair because I think that all of us fall asleep in particular patterns and they have a trance-like quality. We've been doing them for so long. It's like the fish trope it's like the fish water trope, right? It's like, you know, you don't even know you're swimming in, mm-hmm. in that of your type. And you're just like asleep, you know, yes. kind of wandering through life, like almost robotically in your type. The awakening is when you can say, oh, I'm kind of stingy with praise. I need to do something different. That's yeah. having an awakening. Right. Right. You're not as asleep in type as you were. Right. Right. And yeah. so that's beautiful what, mm-hmm. what you just said. Like, it's like, oh. Mm-hmm. Oof, got to, I'm waking up. Yeah. Right to yeah. the darker aspects of my type, and hopefully to the beautiful aspects of your type as well. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have these five rhythms yeah. to help marriages thrive. Mm-hmm. Sound fantastic. Repeat them again so people hear them. Um, so they're speaking life, mm-hmm. serving each other, slowing down, seeking adventure, and staying in awe. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. But you use the word wonder. Yes, in in the awe yeah. rhythm for sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Awe. It, you know, I think we keep landing on it because it was such a surprise for us. I think we had the first four pretty nailed down, and then this last one came, and it's really become our favorite. <laughs> I would say at the end of this, you know, because it kind of wraps a bow on all of them, and I think that's a big theme of the the book, and something that you know we really learned going through it that. At the end of the day, remembering that marriage is a gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, it shifts everything to remember like this guy that I get to love, that I get to wake up to every day, that's a gift. And it's not a given. It's, it's, It's not promise that I get another day. You know, we just had a good friend around our age die of a heart attack instantly. He woke up that morning, he went to the gym, he came home, made the bed for his wife and fell over and he was gone. And, you know, I just think it's moments like that you, you remember, oh, my gosh, like, this is a gift. And, and I think that's what awe brings, practicing it, not just an idea of it and thinking of it, but actually working on practicing that throughout your days and throughout your moments together to instead of just keep doing whatever you're doing, which I love to do as one mm-hmm. <laughs> to be efficient and to get things done if I have a free moment. But when I have those moments of, you know, seeing Chris play with our daughters in the backyard, instead of keeping on doing the dishes, whatever I'm doing, stopping and letting my soul recognize that mm. moment going, 
okay, this is a moment to offer up a silent thanks mm. and to practice that feeling of awe. And it, it's like it, it builds up like a bank account that I can draw from when we hit hard times or when we have a conflict that there's this bank account to pull from that I can remember, wait a second, this is a gift. This person in front of me does not belong to me. He's actually God's and the way that I treat him matters. Um, so it's just, I feel like it's very transformative if you begin to practice it. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I, mm. I call that the sacred pause. Oh, I love that. Mm. Yes, you know, exactly. Uh, a lot of times I do a lot of walking and I'll go down to Radnor. Oh, and I, I Radnor Park, right. for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's this beautiful <laughs> park here in Nashville yeah. where um, it's got a gorgeous lake in it and it's, there's a loop around it, tons and tons of trails through the woods. And I like to go at around six o'clock at night when the sun is just has that beautiful, the light just sort of falls lazily through the, through the trees, you know, and you get that mottled um, like uh, shadows and light, you know, and the leaves are kind of dancing around in that light. Yeah. And I, I dis- I, I'm also a runner, so I, normally I'm running through there. But I do intentional walks and I walk slowly. And every time I see something that catches my eye, I stop. And I, I look at it. I don't go past it. Like, like maybe the, the light is hitting a particular branch in a certain way mm. in the middle of a dark wood. And I'll <clears> stop <throat> and pause and look at it. And sometimes it's with one of my children. My children will say something and I'll stop and pause and, and go, wow. You know, or, mm-hmm. And try not to let those moments go by like a freight train yeah. where the cars are just going by like a Japanese commuter train at 600 miles an hour. And I'm not stopping yeah. to look at any of the cars you yeah. know, yeah. as they go by. We, we, um, we often find ourselves um, in our marriage that I'll just stare, stop and I'll stare at her and I'll go, this is it. Like kids will be playing, we'll be dancing, we'll mm. be cooking, in the ki- whatever it is, you just stop and go, this is it. In case we were wondering that there's something else, <laughs> and I'm probably speaking to myself, <laughs> you know, it's like, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, there's not this thing we're going to attain someday. You know, this right here is it. Mm. Mm. Our kids are here. We love them. We love each other. Like this moment right here, this is it. That's so good for a seven. That's strong for a seven. Yeah. That's strong for a seven. Yeah. Well, because here's the thing. Mm. Um, you know, sevens, more than any other type, have trouble in the present. Mm-hmm. And so when a seven has the ability to awaken from the trancy sleep of the seven and go, wait a minute, this is it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always like when I've counseled sevens before, I go, you know. Everything you need to be happy is here right now. Mm -hmm. Everything. The next moment does not contain the high you are looking for. It's this moment where the high is. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, for me, I I told her, you know, something snapped a few years ago. And it was this moment that I thought, it hit me. It's like, I have nothing left to prove. Like, I don't, you talk about Instagram, celebrities, and marriages. Like, I haven't posted. The only time I posted this last year was on our anniversary to say how amazing she is. <laughs> because I kind of had to. You know, I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm being a good husband or whatever. But I just, for me, like, the, the older I get and the more I do life, the more I go, if, if the world knows my name, cool. If they don't, cool. Like, you know, MTV was driven by all of that stuff, right? right? Now you got to explain that. Okay. Because now, now you've mentioned MTV. I wasn't going to go there. Well, I was going to. I was just actually going to deprive you of the moment. I was just going to say, "Oh, he doesn't need that." But now you said it. No, I just that was what drove me what? as a young. Tell them what you did. Oh, I I had I was a cast member on MTV's Road Rules and Battle of the Sexes too. So I was in in. I'm sure a lot of MTV up, fans. Yeah, if you're if you're, your like, if you're like if you're like mid thirties and up, like you grew up with road, road rules and real world on the TV. Yeah. It was like one of the original, that one in Survivor. And so for me growing up in the small town in the cornfields of Indiana with the life that I had growing up, I was like, I want to go on that adventure because this this adventure here is really boring, mm-hmm. and that looks like an adventure, and it just. It worked out, and I ended up on the show. It was a wild story and how it happened. And so, you know, it was very cool. I mean, it was one of those things like, yeah, but it didn't. No, it was awesome. Like, I got, you know, <laughs> like, but did it, was it really? Did I was like, fulfill? no, it was yeah, amazing. It was, <laughs> it was, but I will say this, and we joke all the time. You know, we went to New Zealand and Tahiti on my trip, and uh, she jokes to me, I didn't take one picture. None. Like, I didn't, I didn't take a picture. Pictures. I actually forgot a swimming suit. Like, I'm like, you're going to Tahiti in New Zealand. But, but like, I'm like, why do I need, I, I got it all right here and it's on film if I want to watch it. But it was a, 
it was an amazing adventure to go on as a you know young 20 something hmm. so. okay but we were talking to that that came out in the context of yeah something well the, yeah i mean my whole thing was is like a lot of my early days was driven to prove something to someone mm. I, I don't myself you know and to the world that i'm capable that i'm not just fill in whatever blank i probably was filling in on myself and then just a few years ago it was just like i got her i got my five kids they're all healthy yeah i've built some cool businesses and i've gotten to do x y and z but like i have nothing to prove to anyone else ever again and the peace that comes over you when you have that revelation, you have that moment because some, you know, I, I can only relate to driven men and probably even women are trying to prove something to someone and they're chasing this thing for so long where for me now I just go, okay. And what the cool thing is, is once you get to that place, it's amazing what some of these doors open that maybe you were chasing hmm. for so years for all the wrong reasons. It's like, okay, now, now you, now you can be responsible for the power that you've been <clears throat> given, the hmm. gifts that you've been given. Now you can actually steward this well because yeah, you're, Hopefully your head and your heart and your mind's in the right spot. So. Mm. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, Anthony, how the human ego is always looking for a label mm -hmm. to substantiate itself, mm -hmm. to give itself substance, mm -hmm. right? It's the difference between I and me, mm. okay? When we, there's, there really mm. is two parts of us, the I and the me. The I is, I think, our genuine self, and the me is the ego self. Mm. And the me is always looking for, I'm a success, mm. right? Sure. right? Or I'm a failure. Right. Yeah. But that gives my ego a sense of identity and solidness mm -hmm. that it actually doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And so the goal of so much of life is to release the labels, to, to overcome the labels, right? Yeah. I gotta, I'm adequate. I'm good. I'm successful. I'm handsome. I've been on MTV. I'm this. I'm For that. Sure. Right? Or I'm a great mom. Or I'm this. Or right. I'm that. Those are, that's not who you are. That's right. something, that's, that's oftentimes your ego saying, give me a label. Yeah. Give me something to make me feel like I'm real. Yeah. Right. Whereas the I, if I'm going to talk in spiritual terms, this mm. one who's hidden in Christ. Mm. And so much of the journey is to uncover that I mm -hmm. that observes the me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. In other words, there is an I in you that like so that's how you know there really is two things, right? Yeah. Mm. Who is it that's observing me? Mm. That's the real you. That's mm -hmm. good. That's right? Good. So that to me sounds like a really healthy transaction that took place in your life, right? Which is, oh, the me doesn't need that wrapping anymore. Yeah, mm. that's good. To be, my ego, and, and I just think so much of life is deflating that ego. Mm. Just letting it go, man. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much minute by minute. Makes for a better marriage, too, if you get rid of that dang ego. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know? I agree. And, uh, my friend Richard Rorlick has I once heard him say, he said, uh, something to the effect of, a saint uh, is the last one to know they're a saint. Yeah. And the moment they realize they're a saint, they're not any longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and a saint can't be offended. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because if there's not enough I there to, me there to be offended, right? It's just, it's not even there. So what the mm -hmm. heck, right? Yeah. It's wonderful to, if you can realize that place. I can only realize it for about 12 minutes at a time every year. Anyway, <laughs> fragile nice. ego of mine. All right, so what, what is it that people are going to get? They read this book. They learn about the five rhythms. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what are they going to get? Because everybody looks at it and they go, okay, this is X amount of dollars. <laughs> what's, my, what's the value proposition here? I think at the end of the day... You know, you want to give people a framework. It's just, I think it's always good. One mm -hmm. of the things we found is that, you know, we're not trying to set people up because you hope that people can go, okay, we're out of rhythm in this area of our life. Everyone listening right now, if I said, are you in rhythm or out of rhythm? People can immediately, everyone listening, immediately goes, I know where we're in rhythm and I know where we're out of rhythm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, now I need a context to try and figure out how to get in rhythm. It's not... You suck and you need to get better. And there's a finger pointed, right? So now it's like, hey, here's a framework. We can go, hey, are we in rhythm or are we out of rhythm? We can mm. both collectively yeah. look at the thing in the middle of the table and go, I think we're maybe out of rhythm. You know, what do you think? Do you yeah. think we're in rhythm or out of rhythm? Well, I, I think we're in rhythm, but maybe if you feel like we're out of rhythm, okay. Yeah, well, it puts us both on the same team yeah. looking mm. at the issues instead mm. of thinking that the other one is the issue. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it gives them a framework to go, okay, what if we do slow down in this area? What if we do speak life to each other? 
you know, what if we go kind of try and seek an adventure or stay in awe or, you know, just, just really serve each other. Like those practices inevitably should, you know, if there's humility involved and everyone's owning their part of the equation, and we're working to find rhythm in that area. I think it, I think it, it, it changes the way that the conversation happens. Mm, so good. You know, um, have you guys read St. Benedict? Yes. Yeah. The Benedictine rule of right. life. That's, oh. So that's what she inspired this talking, whole book. She loves the but rule when I say to someone, it's yeah. like crafting a rule of life for your marriage, their eyes glaze yes. over and well, they go, what are you talking <laughs> about? Protestants yes. will do that. Catholics yes. and Eastern so Orthodox will not do that. So I stopped saying that because he's like, you have to stop saying rule of life because people are going to go, what are you talking about? <laughs> but that is absolutely what inspired this was having a, a practice that you can create mm-hmm. together, including these five rhythms as a couple that we can practice every week that can lead us somewhere, you mm-hmm. know, instead of just drifting wherever the world's taking us. Right. So yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. She can <laughs> sit, you, you want to do a rule of life podcast. She's going to, she's down. Yeah. She's down. Well, I mean, Cause here's the thing for those of you who don't know about uh, the Benedict and rule of life. Yeah. So Benedict, uh, one of the great Catholic theologians, saints, uh, really put together the first monastic community. They had a rule of life in the monastery. That was, and when we, and the original word in Latin for rule would really be more like, I mean, what would be the, what can I equate it to? Maybe um, guiding principles, or it's not rule like, um, these are the rules. It's more like suggested guidelines that hold the community together. Mm, yeah. It's right? good. So right. that the community doesn't fracture, mm-hmm. right? So if we all agree, that we're going to play by this set. Now, they've yep. got a lot more than five. But sure. they, they, right, they, right. Um, and I like the phrase rule of life, right? I do too. Um, yeah. But as long as people are clear that regla, rule, I'm pretty sure that's the word, it, would, would, it means guidelines, right? Mm-hmm. And, or I would say, how do you create a container right. mm-hmm. in which all these very different men at that time in a monastery could get along for life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. For like yeah. 50 years. Right. Right. right? Yeah. We all sign a contract, right? Essentially, not really, but we, a social contract that right. says, this is how we do life. Right. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I, what I'm hearing then, is, by way of analogy, or not, but, but the equivalent here is saying, okay, well, in this marriage, this is our rule of life, right? These are right. the things that we value and that we believe will hold us together. And you're saying, not only just hold us together, but would, would help us to flourish. Yeah. It's like Dan Allender was saying this morning, we need a structure to help us with all the chaos and the yeah. expanse of our being in mm-hmm. life, you know? Yeah. 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 Yes, because life tends to be liquid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Life has, and we can get sort of lost yeah. in the ebb and the flow and the That's right. fact that time seems to go by with a certain yeah. liquidity to mm-hmm. it, right? Um, and so that's why I see the value in this sort of a thing, right? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, everybody needs a container, yeah, right? And no container, then you just, it's like a bank, it's like a river without a bank. Yeah. All the water just flows over the edges and yeah. you get no... Uh, and we already have one. I mean, the, that's something we write about in the book that whether we realize it or not, we already have a rule of life. We already have a rhythm oh, yeah. of that's us. That's right, yeah. That's, we, the question is, do we like where it's taking us? Do we like who mm-hmm. it's shaping us to become? Um, and that's where these rhythms come in. And yeah, it's good. So. Well, all right, Thanks. everybody. The yep. rhythm of us create the thriving marriage you long for. Chris and Jenny Gravy. What a great conversation. Man. Yeah. yeah. That was really, really great. Thank you. You never guys. know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well you know, you've, had a, you've got a podcast, right? Yes. You, you know do. that every time someone yeah. comes into your studio, the yeah. dice are rolled. Yes. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. I don't know. Yeah. We'll just see where yeah. it goes. Yeah. Well, that one will never air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've only done that twice. Right. We've done 200 shows, and I've yeah. only done it twice. Yeah. But, I but we I, we're in the same yeah. spot. No, yeah. I've literally... No, I won't say yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't say it, but but just, it's, you just have to make me do more edits if yeah. you do. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whittle that show down to something decent, you know, eight minutes long. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, right. that did not end well. It's real. That ended in tears, as we like to say, <laughs> right? right? <laughs>
Thanks so much for, for being on the show. I want to encourage everybody again to get the rhythm of us, create the thriving marriage you long for, learn about these uh, five rhythms, I'm going to say rules of life, and um, what great insights too about Enneagram 7s and 1s. Thanks for letting me lean into you a little bit. I love leaning on 7s. <laughs> I have a 7 son, so I know how to lean into 7s, nice. man, and, and uh, I, I appreciate your willingness to, to allow me to do it. Anthony? Yes. You know what I always tell people at the end of the podcast, right? Say it. May you have love. May you have joy. May you have peace. May you have healing. May you have rest. Until next time.